Welcome to our introduction to financial derivatives. In this video, I want to talk about the fundamentals of a derivative. What is a derivative really all about? Why do they exist at all? What is their purpose in the market? And then finally, talk about some of the different types of derivatives out there. So let's get started by understanding what is a derivative. A derivative is basically any security whose price is determined by the value of another asset. The second asset is called the underlying security, or simply the underlying for short. The relationship between a derivative and the underlying can be modeled through a simple equation. The price of the underlying will determine the price of the derivative. So when the price of the underlying security changes, the price of the derivative security will change as well. This is the single most important thing to take away from understanding derivatives. If you understand this, you'll understand generally how a derivative works. Um, there are a whole lot of other complex issues associated with derivatives, and I'll try to talk a little bit more about those in future videos. But for now, the most important thing is to understand this relationship. That's actually why it's called a derivative, is because its price is derived from the value of something else. So now that we understand what a derivative is fundamentally, let's try to understand why do derivatives exist at all? What is their purpose in the market? Well, there are two major purposes, or rather two major ways that they are used. The first is hedging. Corporations often have unwanted risks. For example, let's say that I'm running a multinational corporation and I'm getting paid in Indian rupees because I have some operations in India. And I have to pay my workers in America because they're not gonna accept, uh, they're not gonna accept Indian rupee, they're only gonna accept US dollars. Now, what if the price of the rupee fluctuates a lot? That's, that's a risk that I don't really know how to deal with. I run a corporation. I don't know how to deal with all this currency risk. So I can use derivatives in order to structure uh, a structure situation where I can transfer that risk to someone else who can handle it better. And that is really the purpose of derivative instruments. They can, they can create a vehicle for corporations to hedge out some of their unwanted risks. But derivatives are also used for a second purpose, and that is speculation. Speculation is, is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's kind of just like gambling, in a sense. Uh, one party will make a bet that a derivative will go up, and another party will make a bet that the derivative will go down. What makes derivatives particularly dangerous is that they are highly volatile, which means that their values will fluctuate wildly based on certain events occurring. So, if you win, you win big time, but if you lose, you lose a huge amount of money. And this is why derivatives have come under a lot of scrutiny, because they're not, uh, they're not always as well regulated, yet they can cause such wild swings in value. And that, that can create great systemic dangers to the economy as a whole, as we've, as we've clearly seen from the credit crisis of 2008 and 2009. So, now that we understand some of the different types of derivatives, or excuse me, rather, now we understand why um, derivatives exist at all, let's now move on to some of the different types of derivatives in the market. There are four major categories of derivatives. Um, there are swaps, forwards, futures, and options. I'm going to create a separate video on each one of these derivative types, but for now I want to provide a basic overview of each one. So let's start with swaps. A swap is basically a contract to exchange streams of cash flows based on certain events occurring. So for example, if interest rates change or the value of currency changes or uh, commodities prices fluctuate, then a swap, uh, a predetermined contract, will, will mandate that streams of cash flows are exchanged based on these events happening. One of the most common examples that you hear about in the news is, is the credit default swap, which is a swap, an exchange of a stream of cash flows based on credit default, the default of some debt obligation. Um, and now, it doesn't have to be your debt obligation. You can, make, you can create a swap on someone else's debt obligation at the end of the day. Um, but I've actually created a whole separate video on the topic of credit default swaps, and I recommend that you watch that if you're curious. But that is the most important thing to understand about swaps, that you're exchanging cash flows. On the other hand, forwards are contracts to buy or sell assets at a future date. So instead of exchanging cash flows, you're actually exchanging the underlying asset. Co uh, forwards are not standardized or regulated on major exchanges, so you can structure them pretty creatively, however you want, really. Um, futures are actually very similar to forwards, 
But unlike forwards, they are standardized and regulated, and they are traded on exchanges. And futures are often used to speculate on commodities, such as oil and, and timber and even orange juice, as in the movie uh, Trading Places, um, where, where they tried to corner the orange juice market. Finally, you have options. An option is a contract giving you the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell a security. A good analogy for an option is a movie ticket. When I go and purchase a movie ticket, I have the right to go and see the movie, but no one can make me go see the movie. I, I'm not obliged to go and, and actually attend the viewing. So um, a, a stock option would work the same way. It's a contract that's given me a right to buy or sell a share of stock, but it's, I'm not obliged, I'm not required to do it if I, if I don't feel it's a good opportunity for me. So um, I, I hope this video has provide you, provided you with a, a good solid foundation to understanding derivatives, some of the different types of derivatives, and why they really exist at all. What is, what is their purpose in the market? Um, some of my future videos are going to talk about each one of these derivatives and, and try to provide some more specific examples to help flush out your knowledge. Thank you very much for watching and uh, for, for more videos on these topics, um, financial and, and uh, economics, etc., I, I recommend you check out my website, www.canjo.com.